Hi, I'm Dr. Paul Jenkins. I have a tough question for you here today. Is it possible to improve a marriage when only one is trying? All right, that's kind of a tricky question. I've got some good news and some bad news. I'll finish up with the good news for you because there's a lot of hope. First, the bad news. And this isn't even going to shock or surprise you. Marriage is a team sport. To have ideal outcomes in a marriage, I think both partners need to be equally vested and engaged in the processes that secure the marriage. So that's the bad news. Can you do it by yourself? Well, there's things you can do. I'm going to get to that. But ultimately, it is a team sport. Also, I, I don't know if this is part of the bad news or not, but there are cultural expectations and traditions that aren't necessarily helpful. Here's what I mean. There's a common perception or belief out there that for this marriage to improve requires my spouse to change something. Check in with your own beliefs about that and see if you're in that space. I even have people who come to me and pay me for couples coaching with a full expectation that I will collaborate with them to see if we can get their spouse to change. Now, this is right about where I lose some people, okay? And where they, they wanna fire me, I guess, because I can't change their spouse. They're convinced that that's the only way to a better marriage. Here's the problem with that kind of thinking. When we identify what someone else could do to improve, it creates an energy and a perception that could be labeled criticism. Dr. John Gottman did some groundbreaking research on this very topic where he brags actually in his book that he can predict divorce in one interview. And he's about 80% accurate in those predictions. How does he do it? He's looking for just that. The idea or the thought that my spouse needs to change creates that negative energy. They feel criticized. They become defensive. Then there's the counterattack. Will you do this or that? And now we're off to the races with this conflict in the marriage. And it started with the idea, the thought, the belief that somebody else needs to change something. Now I'm going to throw you a little bone here because... You're right. I mean, this marriage would be better if your spouse would improve. But that's not what we're trying to solve right now. Because as soon as you think that they can improve, then we have that, that troubling dynamic of the conflict and the criticism. Remember, the question is, is it possible to improve a marriage when only one is trying? What if that one is you? And it is. Come on, let's be honest. You're the one watching the video right? You wish that your spouse would step up and do something else, but what if they never do? Does that mean that you have no hope of improving this thing? No. Now, I already acknowledge that marriage is a team sport. We get that. And ideal outcomes are based on both partners applying true and correct principles that are guaranteed to improve a marriage. Those principles work. In fact, there's nine of them. I've, I've honed this down into nine specific principles that in my opinion are guaranteed to improve your marriage and it doesn't require anything from your spouse. These are things that you can do personally. I'm going to share those principles with you. You don't have to scramble to write them down or something. I've already done that for you. Just go to drpauljenkins.com forward slash nine principles, the number nine, the word principles. I've already put it together for you. Go get the PDF. It's just a one sheet. I've got all nine principles right there for you, ready to go. I'll go over them really quickly. Pay attention because these principles can all be personally applied. You don't need your spouse to do anything. You're going to see as I go through these nine principles, that your spouse could be doing a better job with at least five of them. And it's probably true, your spouse could be doing a better job, they could shape up. But that's not helpful because it puts you back in criticism mode and that creates the conflicts. So as you listen to these principles, I want you to think about how you personally could apply these principles. And this is how you can unilaterally 
change the game. Make improvements in the marriage, even if you're the only one who's trying. This is the good news. So listen up. Here's the nine principles. Starting at the top, positivity. When I say positivity, remember, I am not a trite, fluffy, motivational speaker just saying that from the stage. Oh, just think positive. No, I'm a professional psychologist. When I say positivity, I'm talking about the proper operation of the equipment of your own mind. This is not the lightweight fluff that we might be used to hearing all the time. This is about psychology, okay? Positivity is not ignoring the pain. It's not ignoring the problems or the difficulties. It's intentionally choosing to steer your mind in a particular direction in two different levels of engagement, evaluation and creation. I'm not gonna get into the whole thing right now. But there's other videos here on the channel where you can pick that up and that's what we cover in our coaching programs. Positivity. Second principle, values. Meaning the why behind your relationship. Get clear in your mind about why you created this relationship in the first place. Sometimes life beats us up and we lose track of that. This is a powerful way for you to get reconnected to your own why and the values that support this relationship. Principle number three, humility. Humility, in my definition, is giving up our need to be right in exchange for being open. It's huge. Coupled with humility is principle number four, forgiveness. And it goes hand in hand with the humility, I think, is our humility is our willingness to change our own perspectives and behavior. And forgiveness is allowing other people to do the same thing. Forgiveness is also giving up our, our demand for a better past. How's that going for you anyway? It's going to be a powerful way to improve this marriage, this relationship. Principle number five, respect. I can ask kids as young as four or five years old, what does respect mean? It means to be nice. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty good. Respect, where you respect yourself, others, and everything around you. This powers up your relationship as well. Principle number six, love. And when I talk about love, it's kind of like positivity. I'm not talking you know, the, the meaningless way that we throw that word around sometimes. Love to me is not a feeling. Love is a choice. And there's a clear choice between love and hate. I use the word hate because people hate the word hate. But think about it. All of our interactions with each other are going to be either on the love side or on the hate side. Either a little or a lot. And you get to decide which which side your interactions are going to be on. Love, it's a powerful choice. Principle number seven, compassion, which has a lot to do with kindness and love, but it, it, it's also the willingness to suffer for or in behalf of some greater cause. The, the very roots of the word lead that direction. Compassion, what are you truly committed to? Principle number eight, work. No surprises, folks. Productive outcomes depend on work. Things don't just magically poof into being. You get to do the work to bring this about. And finally, principle number nine. Listen to all three words. There's three in this particular principle. All the rest are just one word. Wholesome recreational activities. All right, now all three words are important. I, I work in a primarily conservative religious community. And there's a lot of folks who delete the second word. And they just focus on wholesome activities. Come on, people, lighten up. We got to be having fun. If we're not having fun, we're doing something wrong. And I've been to Vegas. I know that there are recreational activities that are not particularly wholesome. So let's Keep track of all three words. Wholesome recreational activities are a powerful way to improve your marriage. I've just given you the nine principles. I know we didn't spend a lot of time on them, but I hit them, hit them rapid fire. Remember, I've got a list of these for you. DrPaulJenkins.com forward slash nine principles. Go get it. 
Start working on those. Now, a final thought about the good news. The good news is you can improve this marriage even if you're the only one trying. How are you gonna do that? Through application of those nine principles. Get to work on them. A little warning and disclaimer. These are for personal use only. You with me? These are not to use on your spouse. These are not to go beat your spouse up or criticize or accuse or attack your spouse because they need to be doing a better job with the nine principles. Even if that's true, it's not helpful. You focus on what you can do. I promise this will bring about some positive effects in your relationship and every other aspect of your life, really. Hey, thanks for jumping in on this video. The next one up is how to reprogram your mind to stay strong and positive. You can see this is an important part of relationships. It's gonna help in other aspects of your life too. Cue that one up next.